What's up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Today we're going to be building around the Titan and providing you with a very niche but pretty powerful ad controller setup, focused around blinding enemies and then finishing them off with a mighty boom. I have had a thought about Season 15 and what we could potentially be up against, and thought why not prepare ourselves in case we face off against their unstoppable force who can't be simply taken out through normal means. What I mean by this is that the new seasonal activity and nightfalls could potentially provide us with some very tough scenarios that may require us to think outside the box and experiment with. And with that I had an idea, why not utilise the blinding grenades abilities and perks as much as we can to allow the freedom of protecting ourselves and preventing ourselves from being swarmed while also building up a super that will take out a boss very quickly with little to no trouble. With such a setup, any type of endgame content introduced to us can be easily overcome if we know the enemies can't fight back, and we can focus effort primarily on the boss if need be. I'm also going to be adding in the Queen Breaker Fusion, as this will play an important part in Season 15, but also because it can blind targets as well, so a win-win. I'm very sure you'll find some uses out of the build, since blinding grenades focused builds are quite rare to come across, but they hold a ton of weight when correctly used. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then please do leave a like and a sub as it really does help me out. Starting off with the subclass, we will be using Code the Missile to enhance our super further with the exotic QS of the Falling Stars, and also create an easier path of building up a super via melee and mods usage. Although Code the Earthshaker will be more ideal, as we can gain 2 grenades via the magnitude perk, and this subclass does provide crowd control and options, I don't believe the subclass fully brings out the strength of the build that I would be going for currently. Code of the Missile provides us the opportunity to throw ourselves directly at an enemy and cause a huge amount of damage in a single blow, while Earthshaker is more crowd control designed. With my weapons and perks, I have plenty of ways to control the area I am in, and I don't want to use a super that is very limited in the strengths, especially in endgame nightfalls. While using my perks to slow enemies down, I can utilise the Ballistic Slam ability to not only take out a wide number of enemies quickly, but also build up my super bar per enemy killed, which will play an important role down the road. When we add in mods such as Hands On and Ashes to Assets to the setup, super regeneration becomes even more faster from the get-go. This is honestly all you need for the subclass setup, as the rest will be coming from the mods and the weapons themselves. However, if you're a player that doesn't have military arc, nor the QS exotic, then don't fret as you can still use the build as shown. You would just need to use Code of the Earthshake instead, or something else for its benefits. For weaponry, we're going to be focusing on gear that pair well with each other in terms of priming a target and detonating them. As for your blinding grenades acting as a primer, our secondary should be something that will greatly benefit from it, such as Dragonfly or Firefly perks. Within my primary, for example, I'm using the Ignition Code with Blinding Grenades, Ambitious Assassin and Danger Zone, as it will help with stopping enemy's movements and allow me an easier way to net multiple kills with my secondary, heavy, melee or super, etc. Let's be honest here, this grenade launcher has become one of the most top tier grenade launchers to bring with you for any endgame content in terms of perk roles, but most importantly, this specific role I managed to get has become one of the most reliable setup for always allowing me a chance to stun enemies in any type of higher tier content. This is thanks to the Ambitious Assassin that can grant me 2 in the barrel compared to 1 if I land a multi kill with said launcher. This combined with Danger Zone that increases the blast radius even more, pretty much sets the rest of the build up from here on out. Now of course, any grenade launcher with blinding is fine to use and the results will be the same except for the increase in blast radius and the extra value weapon. You also have to take into consideration the weaponry setup you have, as you'll want a seamless progression every time you switch in and out. With my primary and secondary, I can use my grenades fire and forget mechanic, and then switch to my secondary to easily mop up and repeat, and this is what you want to have as well so you don't have to micromanage every bit of your gear. For our secondary, I'm using the Adapt Shadow Price with Steady Rounds, Surplus and Dragonfly, and this combined with my blinding grenades will act as the detonator to the entirety of the build. With the perk Dragonfly, I can wipe out a good portion of targets in one blast as long as they are grouped up or ideally near each other when the explosion kicks in. The AR is pretty fantastic to use with the perk with its good mag and reserve size, and it's an adapt version so I can add on the big ones mod for an extra boost in terms of damage. One other key thing about the weapon is that I can pair this with the elemental one mods to produce wells as I go and keep my abilities afloat. This is pretty important for the setup for allowing me to regenerate my abilities a bit faster through passive means, 
and thus allow me to build up super energy for example at a steady rate. Of course you do not need to have an adapt shadow price like I have shown to get the best of the build, a normal shadow price will do the same thing I'm able to achieve. Alternatively, Stochastic Valuable, Arsenic Bite, and Gian 7 Rifle are all Arc and can roll with Dragonfly if you don't have Shadow Price, and they are all equally as great. For Heffy, we have the Queen's Breaker Linear Fusion, and this weapon hasn't seen a lot of action since Gambit was first introduced. That weapon back then was an invader's wet dreams in terms of net and easy kills with its absurd aim assist. Now it's a bit more on par with other linear fusion and pops up every now and then for a quick reacting DPS weapon. However, Seize 15 is around the corner and with it comes the fusion anti-champion mods which once I believe is introduced into the game, people will most likely rely on the Queen Breakers a lot more in terms of end game with a single target and high DPS against mini bosses to bosses. That's why with the focus of the build and where it's going, I want to incorporate the weapon into the build to make it fully prep for whatever is coming our way and make the build synergize more. However, if you don't have it though, you can opt into using the Tranche Linear Fuser instead, which should serve you well. For the stats, the three key areas of focus will be Discipline, Intellect and Strength, which will all play a part in supporting the build from start to finish. Now there are a few mods we do have that will benefit the build, but the majority of the items used are straightforward and can be avoided if you don't have said mods. Our discipline has been set for 70, for what I would consider a passive regeneration amount needed for utilizing your grenades. We don't have subclass perks available that will grant us faster regeneration, nor do we have perks such as demolitionist to aid us, so getting this stat up to the highest level possible is the most feasible way to utilize your flashbangs. This area is pretty straightforward and can be built up however you like, however I intend to utilize the discipline mod, armor with high discipline stat, and Elemental World mods to help with passive regeneration. Elemental World will be the most important factor for ability to use as it will give me a good chunk of energy back as long as I proc them which is pretty simple to do. We then have Intellect which will be linked back into our users of grenades and melee to speed up the regeneration rate of a super. At 60 this should be enough to support you in the long run for the passive means while mods such as Assets to Assets and Hands On will provide you with even more super energy upon using certain abilities. We also have the Font of Wisdom mod that will provide a super generation boost the moment we pick up a well. So in general, as long as we use our abilities correctly, we will never run out of super energy, nor do we have to wait a long time for it to regenerate. And then lastly we have a melee, which I've kept at 40. Simply because I don't intend to heavily rely on my melee all the time, because the cons outweigh the pros if I simply mess up. Now this doesn't mean I'm going to abandon it and simply rely on my grenades, but rather use it sparingly. No certain mods will need to be used to keep this area afloat since we have the Elemental World mods available that will cover my abilities regeneration at a steady pace. This leaves us with the rest of the mods that are left over, and these mods are generally just for creating Elemental Wells in different forms. Elemental Light will allow us to create well upon defeating the enemy via our super and will be very helpful against mini bosses. Elemental Armaments increases the chance that our arc weapon will create a well upon kills and this will help in rough situations where our abilities are all spent and we need a quick way to produce them. Elemental Ordnance allows us to create wells via grenade kills and this will be the most relied upon method of creating them instantly. And then lastly we have Bridge and Clear which will provide a debuff on mini bosses to bosses in general. Now as we cover the main topics of what makes the setup, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For Head we have Minor Strength, Ashes to Assets, Hands On and Fondal Wisdom mod. Arm we have Mine of Resilience, Unstoppable Grenade Launcher, Anti-Barrier Auto Rifle, and Elemental Light Mod. Chest we have Discipline, because we've done the times 2, an Elemental Armors Mod. Leg we have Discipline, Linear Fusion Scavenger, Grenade Launcher Scavenger, and Elemental Ordnance Mod. Mark we have Maya Discipline and Bridge and Clear Mod. Well, what I had in mind for creating a build was to effectively prepare players the moment new content comes through and have a way to slow enemies down so you can understand your bearings before delving in and then pretty much have as much fun as you can in a safe and fun manner. This build has achieved that goal quite well and has a few cons that can be adjusted, nothing serious. All my abilities are fully supported via Elemental World mods through different methods and this alone will allow me to constantly use my grenade to constantly provide support and prevent enemies from moving from one point to another. This in hand allows my secondary weapon with Firefly to easily mop up 
and thus create even more whales in the process and repeat as many times as you like. Alternatively, we can rely on our ballistic slam to finish enemies while they are stunned if we want to save ammo or find that our weapon isn't just as effective. This simple but effective method will allow users to control the environment to how they please and pretty much carry you from beginning of a new season to end game. Everything here is suited for end game damage and control, which is important the moment you think about taking this build into most end game environments as you don't know what you may be facing. A prime example of this is the introduction to Scorn Champions that could potentially arrive in Season 15. These new enemy types ish are already annoying in base game, but with the addition of new abilities means they are going to become even more of a pain to deal with. This is where the build will come in handy as we have the power to boost through tough enemies in a single super and the power to stunt minor enemies as well long enough for us to finish them off without them landing a hit on us. When trying this in Grandmasters, you will then see the build becomes a lot more forgiving to use them as long as everyone has the right items to power through. This in many ways will support your team hugely by suppressing the minor enemies from the get go and thus reduce the number of deaths you guys will go through. It all sounds great but you're probably thinking surely this build has some kind of downside to using it. And yes you're right. Like many builds, this build does have a downside to it which is matching elements issues. Depending on what modifier is available, you may come into a situation where match game is a thing and if that is the case, you'll need a weapon that can counteract these effects. Now the only issue with this is that you'll need to swap your primary, secondary or heavy to count this and doing so will affect how you proc elemental wells which you'll be relying on the most. Of course, an easier way around this is to use the hard like exotic but not everyone will be happy to use an AR all the time. So overall, blinding grenades are your friends and you should be relying on them a hell of a lot more rather than through manual things. With this build in your collection, you will have the power to stun and smash your way to victory and this sort of build is something you may rely on once season 15 and more comes round. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by, I'll see you in the next one.